Welcome to Right Talk with Mike Lee. I understand this is like my 32nd show and I have a special guest with me this evening. Her name is Jennifer Drabant. And she's changed on me since I first met her. I think I first met Jennifer on Facebook. Actually. Yes, yes. And your hair was blonde. Yes, it was. And you switched up on me. I switched up on you just a few days ago. Yeah, Jennifer is one of our, since, I, since I've introduced myself, I, I take, take my sunglasses off. You know that. I'm still the uh, revolutionary Republican in residence. And I'm still uh, still conservative and still Republican. Thanks, Jennifer, for, for showing up to, to, for my show today. Of course. Jennifer is one of our, one of our star volunteers for our for the Republican Party, Travis County Republican Party, and she's been doing a lot of things lately. She's been doing a lot mm -hmm. of things. Lately. I and have. Jennifer, tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, because I never got to meet you. I think. I first met you on Facebook. Right. And before I even met you in person, I had asked you to do perform a little task for me, which was what put uh, the M some MLK announcement somewhere, mm -hmm. and you did that for me. Yes. Tell us where are you from? I'm from a little bit north of Houston. It's called the Woodlands. Um, I grew up there, and then I went to school at the University of Texas at San Antonio. I got my bachelor's of math there. And then I University of Texas San Antonio. Yes, and then a bachelor's degree in math. A bachelor's of science in math, and then I went into teaching. I've taught high school and junior high age for five years. What courses do you teach? Can you teach? Oh, I've taught algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-cal, calculus A B, and calculus B C. Algebra one, two. Geometry. Geometry. Pre-cal. Pre-cal. Calculus AB. Calculus AB. And Calculus BC. Okay. Because I took, um, when I was younger, I was kind of smart. When I uh, took the uh, college admissions test, ACT, they caught me on a good day. I had a, uh, I had a perfect score. I don't know how the hell that Oh, happened. wow. So I was, you know, when I was uh, <laughs> younger, I was. It's very uh, good. And after that, I got some offers to engineering schools and crap like that, but, uh. I used to like math and science a lot. Good. So I have a lot of admiration for people who, who do math, especially in calculus. But I wish, my, I wish my teachers had told me what the deal was. Mm -hmm. Because one thing about law school, once, in law school, once you learn the deal, you can kind of understand things. If they had told me, look, algebra is the study of the properties of lines. Mm -hmm. Calculus is the study of the properties of uh, the intersection of lines and circles. But they, you know, they, they should have just told me that. They should have. Instead, I have to go through all this mess to figure that out. Yeah. Okay, so how did you have, tell me this. How did you become a conservative in these days? In okay. Time? Well, well I'm, I'm sure most of your friends are probably think they're Democrats. Big mix at first, mix? definitely. Um, most of my friends were very liberal coming out of college. I was liberal. Um, well, I was a bit mixed. Um, I, my mom is very, very liberal, and my dad is very conservative. So my own views for a long time were very mixed. Um, the first time I could vote, I voted for Obama. And mm -hmm. um, then, once I got towards the end of college, I turned more conservative. It just when you kind of, when you have to worry about starting to take care of yourself and you're going to be on your own soon, it just happens or, naturally. When life got serious. Exactly. When real life happens, um, it makes sense to turn conservative. So once I graduated college, um, I mean, that was it. I had done a complete 180 from when I started. I've always kind of secretly said to myself, it's easy to be liberal until you have children. That is exactly and you have children, it. And if you're a guy, 
if you have a daughter, you 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 find you'll find the conservative part of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just how life is. Right. Because life is can be a serious proposition, even though you're not going to get out of it alive. Right. But uh, I, I, it seems to me that, in if education is a crucible, particularly higher education, secondary education, if education is a crucible, it's a crucible of liberal bullshit. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, that's why you have college campuses protesting mm. conservative speakers. You have them shouting people down. You have them, you have them shooting people now. Right. They're so tolerant. Right. So you know it's bullshit. Oh, definitely. I mean, college campuses, I graduated, it's been six years from college. Mm -hmm. The degree that it is worse than now is ridiculous in just six years the difference between when I was on a college campus just with the tolerance of opposing views and now is so different um, I, I remember my American politics class at UTSA was my favorite class because we debated um, I don't even know where my professor stood I don't know if he was a liberal or a Democrat but he allowed us all to debate and you know voice our opinions and everything was welcomed and now what you're hearing on college campuses that's not allowed um, what happened in berkeley when ann culture was supposed to speak there and well they've become indoctrination centers mm -hmm. they're not centers of thought and debate and discussion as it seemed to be the case when i was in college which was um, seems like a million years ago that was uh that might have been before you were born. That's 1969, 1970. Yes, that's about 20 years before I was born. Uh, you're a millennial, huh? Yes. So what's up with you guys, collecting? I, man, there's... Are they, are they be, most of them being led around by the nose and don't know what the hell to think or being told what to think or what's up? Again, I, there's a huge mix. The younger ones, because I believe the youngest millennials now are 22. Mm-hmm. Most of them are liberals. Most of them still aren't really on their own. So they're just really, they're the ones that are like the very far left ones out protesting all the time. There are a lot of conservative millennials that are my age. I'm 29. And when you get closer to the 30s, there, there are quite a few. Well, when life gets real. Exactly. Now, for me, I've always been kind of a thinking type person. And I realized I was conservative when I got my first paycheck. I was about 15. I was working at a little restaurant called Country Kitchen Restaurant. Mm -hmm. My nephew, uh, Lamont, and I were both, we were both lied and got a job there for the summer. And uh, we were paid so much an hour, and we figured we worked just not many hours. And I figured out, okay, I'm going to buy this many shirts, this many socks, this many pants. And I got my first check, and I saw where Social Security had been taken out. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, there's a pair of socks going. And I didn't like that. Right. Because I did the work, and not only, not only did not only did to take my socks, I did the work, but they got the money. The money was gone before I got it. Right. That's when I first learned about taxes, and I learned not to like them mm -hmm. because it's my money. Right. I did the work. Oh, yeah. Now if, now, if I had done the work and they gave me the money, then they come get the money from me. Okay, but not get the money for me. Right. I did the work. And so I, I came to what that did was that spurred me to like study things like what is liberal, what is conservative. Mm -hmm. Now, back in 1970, before you were born, Liberal meant you were for change. Right. Conservative meant you were for slow and gradual change. The one thing I believe in life that's certain is change. Things are going to change. But if things are going to change, you ought to look and see what the change is going to be and then decide whether you want to make the change as opposed to jumping over a cliff and then looking. Mm -hmm. And so being, conserv being conservative in an approach to things made sense to me. That liberal jump over to jump over and look, late, look later didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And it, it really was that. But now, 
When you're saying conservative, it's almost like you're saying you're racist, you're bigoted, you're all these things. Oh, goodness. It's just like the word Republican. I can say the word Republican to someone and their brain will stop working. Yes. I it, mean, man. And, it's, and I think it's because for many, for about 50 years, conservatives have allowed liberals to speak about them. Right. This is a conservative. He's a racist. He's this. And the conservatives have said nothing. And so people were left just to believe what they heard, the only thing they heard. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that ha was allowed to happen generally in the media and in institutions. And so that's why people came to believe that. Right. And so I believe one of the main things that we need to do as conservatives is to open our damn mouths. Well, I agree. But if you're just sitting there and you say, I'm a Republican, and then somebody says, okay, you're a racist. How do you prove that you're not a racist with your words? You know? I don't know that you can prove a negative. Right. But I think that you can point out what your characteristics are, what, you, what your beliefs are. That's right. about all you can do. Definitely. And when a person says that you're, you're a Republican, you're a racist, they've already, they, they've, they've, they're already brainwashed, really. Right. And so what, what, you, what we're talking about is trying to undo what's been done. And people are not really quick to change their mind mm -hmm. without proof. Right. Definitely. Now, the one thing that, that, that I like to point out to people is uh, the various platforms of the parties. The Democrats believe one thing. The Republicans supposedly believe another. Mm -hmm. And for me, I guess... It comes down, number one, God comes first, if you believe in God. Mm -hmm. I believe Democrats are largely godless, mm -hmm. or they're bullshitting about it. Yeah, definitely. They go to church on Sunday, pray holy, 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 and then go vote in a way that is opposed to that. Exactly. And don't see it. Mm -hmm. And then it's suddenly a woman's right to choose. It's not it's, God, it's a woman's right to choose. It's so backwards. To me, if you put God first... Everything else falls in line. Exactly. If you take God out of the equation, it's anything goes. It's like you have men thinking of women, women thinking of men, and trying to convince you of the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, to con try to convince anyone who tries to convince you that lies the truth and the truth is a lie can't can't be right with God. That means the way I see it. Right. I could be wrong. No, I mean, I 100%, you know, agree with you on that, and. I've thought that for a while, that now Democrat values are so backwards as far as invo involving faith. If your faith is important to you, Republican values just go along with that. It's the right way to go. And then if you think about just all this, you know, pro-choice, all that type of stuff, that the Democrats value <laughs> it's just so backwards and then you get persecuted for wanting to put your faith into you know your values in your everyday life and it's disappointing well to me you know a lot of what I believe is based on kind of like my personal experience I uh, when I first started law school my roommate uh, who was Charles was uh, I was one L he, I was in my first year he was in his third year and he asked me, I remember spring of uh, 75, about, we, had been, we were roommates, second semester of my first year. He says, uh, Mike, what do you think about gay people? And I told him, I said, Charles, honestly, just me personally, I think they should be taken behind a barn and shot. I said, but you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to treat people humanely. Mm -hmm. And that it wouldn't be humane. Right. But treating people humanely does not mean I have to endorse your bullshit. Oh, definitely. I call bullshit bullshit. Mm -hmm. And if you choose, and, and my other thing is, you, everyone has a constitutional right to be a damn fool if they want to. You can be a damn fool. If you want to jump off a of bed, bye. Right. But don't be, don't be asking me to jump off with you. you just go and jump. Exactly. I don't have to be a part of your stuff. And that's what is so, you know, is going so wrong today is that there are so many people trying to push their beliefs on you and you have to accept it or else you're a bad person if you don't. Um, 
you're a racist, you're a homophobe, all these things, if you don't accept their values or their lifestyles. And these are the tolerant people. Now. Right. <laughs> the tolerant people don't want to discuss anything. They right. They, they're tolerant as long as you agree with them. Right. If you disagree with them, they want to shoot you. Right. And a uh, ask, ask Congresswoman Scalise, Scalise. Right. Exactly. And, I mean, today I just, about an hour ago, I came across an article <laughs> that called me a, it said a local organizer is a known fascist, known fascist, Jennifer Dravent. <laughs> I said, I just read that. You know, that was the most bizarre thing I've ever read. And it's disappointing that I've never shown any tendencies or characteristics to be that way. And but, but you know, one thing that <clears throat> I always try to have a good friend. My best friend passed away last August 2nd, Greg Stimmer. It's something Gay used to say to me all the time. He says, you know, Michael, when someone points, points their finger at you, they're pointing three fingers at themselves. Right. So somebody called you a fascist, and it's prob they're probably the fascist. Oh, yes, definitely. Now, on the other show, <coughs> a few minutes ago, I, uh, I was saying that uh, I was at last year's Juneteenth, there was a guy who was obviously a Democrat. He had a T-shirt on and said, what part of well-regulated don't you understand? And I thought to myself, hmm, the things were well-regulated on, on the plantation when they had slaves. They were well-regulated. Mm -hmm. And I guess in communist regimes, things are well-regulated. They control what you hear, what you say, right. what you think. And really, to me, on a certain level, that's what is attempt, being attempted by liberals here in the states now. Mm -hmm. They want to control what you think. You're not supposed to say the word nigga. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to call conservative people names. Mm -hmm. They're telling you what to think. Definitely. And if <clears throat> someone con has control over what you think, are you free? No. Of some course people not. are for freedom, some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Some people are for free, some for freedom, and some are for control. Right. Now, me, I'm a Republican because I believe that I believe in opportunity and I believe in freedom. Mm -hmm. but another thing I believe is I believe that education is the key. Yes. Now, yes. Who was it that said, uh, I think it was Frederick Douglass that said, education makes a person unfit to be a slave. But we have a lot of educated people who have slave, who have slave mind, who are slave minded. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes to the kind, there's certain types of educators out there that are becoming more and more common that are kind of putting um, these really left-wing ideologies in their heads, especially at the university level now. I am wondering, <clears throat> and I hope, I know at one point when I was on, at, on college in the 1970s, if an institution was supportive of the ROTC, somehow the threat, their federal monies were threatened. I think universities' budgets should be, their money should be threatened if they don't allow free speech and open debate on different topics. Oh, definitely. And I thought about that when I heard about Thing in Berkeley, and I think about that every time I hear about a conservative speaker being shouted down. I say, oh, cut off the money. Right. If you're not going to allow, if you're not going to allow free and open debate, no money. I completely agree. Just stop. It's like the sanctuary bull, city bull crap. Hmm. You know, I was at the Capitol the last day of this legislative session. Yeah, you did the protest thing real good. What was the last <laughs> protest you went to? The last one I went to was June 10th, and it was an anti-Sharia law one. Um, before that, I was I led the March for Trump here in Austin, mm -hmm. and then coming up on Saturday. I have another march, um, Saturday, it's called the 1776 Freedom March. You got some marching shoes? Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It, I mean, you have all these people coming out because our voices have been shut down as Republicans and conservatives. And doing these marches, it's people come out and it makes them have a voice that they otherwise wouldn't have. And when I did the March for Trump, 
There was, I'll never forget it, it was my favorite thing to see. This 87 year old lady, she had a walker and the march was about a mile. It was pouring rain and she went around the whole march route with her rocker, I mean her, her walker. And it was just the neatest thing to see and she was so happy to be a part of it. And um, so that's the kind of people that I like doing it for. Because well, I guess in, when you say that, it's kind of like uh, conservatives may have, people like her, they may have let her down. Yes. You know, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm discovering is that there are conservative people out here, out there, but that they need support. They need to know there are others among them like, who are like-minded. Right. So they need support like, like we're in recovery or something. <laughs> 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 But that, it's to true. me, that indicates the extent to which we have been perhaps beat down yes. by communication and by not communicating what we're thinking. Right. It's just like when, when, when Trump, I'm still trying to collect my money, I've said this many shows, when Trump was coming down the escalator, I put $100 on it. Mm -hmm. With Marjorie Malone, I put it all out there, Marjorie. She's an old friend of client of mine in Florida. He can't be here. I said, I bet a hundred dollars. If Hillary had won, I'd have paid. She mm -hmm. hadn't paid me yet. I can't even find her now. I got email addresses for her. <laughs> she disappeared she, 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 on she, you. She, I want my money though. Right. But I knew that something. My sixth sense just told me he was going to win. Mm -hmm. And what happened? When I was I was uh, gassing up at a I was at a gas station one day, pumping gas. And I had this book, Why Am I Conservative? This lady came out with a car full of kids, and I was going to show her the book to let her know that you might want these kids to read this. Mm -hmm. And she says to me, I don't talk politics with anybody. When I showed her the book and I gave her the, my card to indicate that I worked for the Travis County Republican Party, she opened up it like I had a new best friend. I came home and I told my wife, who's my producer, I said, I said, Trump is going to win. I knew he was going to win. Mm -hmm. I said, I say, it's going to be some people come out to vote who never, probably never voted before they're going to vote for this man. Exactly. That's exactly what That's what happened. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a really good night when he won. I, de I mean, I was up till... Three o'clock? Oh, yeah. I was, it was the best feeling. <laughs> Just thinking about it gives me goosebumps still. That was the night my mother passed away. My mom and my mom was 99. Oh. She was in the hundred on December 10th. So wow. So was 30 days short. Wow. I think God took one angel and left another. Definitely. So it was, it was, good, it was a good thing. Okay. But I'm, when I look at things now, and there's, there, are, there are a lot of videos that I've been able to locate about Trump before the election, about his, 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 his being... Some of the uh, evan evangelicals thought that God's hand was upon Trump. Mm -hmm. And I think about that every election, Bush, Obama, and you know, and, uh, and I ask myself, and I kind of pose rhetorically to my Democratic friends, the same guy that bought you Obama bought you Trump. Right. What makes you think he changed? I think we get the president. I think we get the leadership that we need and that we deserve. And I think, I think Obama disappointed a lot of people because I think a lot, of, many people, black and white, had hoped he would somehow undertake at least a step to try to deal with the so-called racial, with the real racial divide we have. Here. Yes. I don't think he had the guts. No, I mean that was apparent. He had no guts. That was apparent. Um, because he did he. One thing, as a, one thing to me as a leader, you can't be afraid for people to get mad at you. Exactly. That now, Trump has made some Republicans, Trump call, talked about everybody back. Oh, yeah. He talked about everybody, talked called <laughs> lying, tick, crew, everybody, he called everybody names and everything. Yeah, he has. So he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't really friend, all that friends with the Democrats. And Republicans oh, are not all friendly with him. No, 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 you know, no. So he really ran. He he really ran. He was kind of on his own. Definitely. And I kind of liked his candidacy because, to me, he wasn't necessarily beholden to anyone. He's already a billionaire. He so he can't buy him. Yeah, that, I mean that was definitely one of his appealing factors to so many of us. Um, 
you know, he had said that he was going to drain, drain the swamp on his inaugural address. He talked about, you know, getting rid of all the establishments in well, Washington. He, well, he hasn't done what I had hoped he would do. If I was him, I would have cleaned out everybody in D.C. I would have fired all Democrats to hell with them. Mm -hmm. And hired all Republicans. I'd bring your own people in. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's people there now still trying to stab him in the back. Oh, for sure. That's very obvious that there is still a lot of people there who he can't trust. And no. they're still there. <laughs> but that's, that's his thing. My thing was, uh, I think the same, the same guy that brought us Obama brought us Trump. Right. And Obama, I call him old bathroom boy, because he, uh, he, mm -hmm. he dealt with bull crap. Mm -hmm. What bathroom somebody's going to use? Who the hell cares? Right. What, your bears only use, use the bathroom in the woods behind cedar trees or what? <laughs> I mean, what the hell? But uh, your volunteers' activity, are you, uh, we know you do a lot of protesting. Have you ever done any block walking or anything like that for any candidates or anything? I have not done that. Not um, even in the woodlands? Mm -mm. Well, it's a Ted Pozo district, right? I think it's Ted Pozo district. Well, you s when I lived in the Woodlands, I just, you know, I was so, at the time, I wasn't as involved in mm -hmm. politics. And then when you I... You high school then? Well, I lived, high school and I lived there for a few years when I was a teacher as well. Um, I just started getting really involved recently and coming to Austin, it was the perfect opportunity for me to really get involved. Now I'm kind of, you know, in it for life. <laughs> and <laughs> coming up here when, you know, the block walking starts, I mean, I'm going to be right okay. there. Yeah. We had an MLK meeting on May 20th, I think it was. You were yes, there. yes. You came out in the storm. Yes. I'm glad to see you there. Oh, I it's good was glad to be to there. to the meeting that you had announced on Facebook. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so it would have been kind of strange if you hadn't shown up. Of course. But on Facebook and at the meeting on the 20th, your hair was blonde. Yes. Now it's not blonde. Right. He changed that. I saw that on Facebook yesterday or the day or something. Mm -hmm. like that. So you switched up on me. I did. Change your hair. What's going on with that? I just wanted, this is my. mood or something? <laughs> this is my natural hair color. And I thought that soon I'm going to be getting gray hair. And I... I can't, I can't say anything about hair. <laughs> this is my statement on hair right here. And I want to enjoy... That's not why I wear my hat, though. I'm not ashamed of my hair. I want to enjoy the time I have left that I don't have to dye my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I just made it my natural color, and it's staying that way until I get gray hair. Now I met your husband, uh, was that last Saturday or Saturday before last? Saturday before last, June Juneteenth, I think it was. No, he was. Um, he wasn't. He was at. Um, the. Was? That was just my friend. He okay. was at. Um, the. The first Travis County GOP meeting. Okay. Um, was it? Was did you come to the uh, SREC meeting where James was? Uh, no. Elected. Okay. No. But. Scott was at the first Travis County GOP meeting that I went to, and that was, was that in. at the library? Mm-hmm. Okay, I met him at the library. Yeah, so that's, I know, I talked to you very briefly there. You were kind of, because you, you were like me. You wanted to be a precinct chair, right? Well, I already have a. Um, you have, you already have, but you mm -hmm. wanted to be a precinct chair, mm -hmm. right? That's yes. what I wanted to be. Uh-huh. And James Dickey says, no, I want you to be a precinct chair. I got something else I want you to do. And now I'm in this director of outreach and engagement for the for the for the county. But uh, <clears throat> James's story was kind of interesting to me. I don't know if you know it, but James had had lost being county chairman. Yes. But then he went through a whole lot of things, and now he's back. He was back being county chairman. Then mm -hmm. the state vacancy came up, and he 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 uh, threw his hat in the ring for that, and he won that. Now he's over the whole state. Right. So he went from he went from being out of Travis County chair, back into the Travis County chair, into the state chair. Right. All in less than a year. <laughs> that is a very big change. Definitely. And we're, we're having a uh, 
the RPT is having an event on the 4th at Milburn Park and mm -hmm. Cedar Park. Yep, I will be there. You plan to go there? Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring my girls there, and it'll be fun. How old are your girls? They're five. Both of them five? Yes. Are they twins? Yes. Yeah, you have, you have the bonus, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm a twin also. You're a twin? And my mom, so. What? Three generations. Wait a minute. I'm trying to how many twins are there. <laughs> Luther and Lewis. James and, John, James and Johnny Baker. Greeny and uh, Ronald Kilgore. I know, I know three sets of twins in my life. Yeah, that's can, it? Oh, uh, Marsha and Marvin, four. Wow, that's not very many. And you're a twin? Uh -huh. I have a twin brother. So where's your twin's your brother? He lives in the woodlands. Oh, he's still there? Mm -hmm. Does he have twins too? No, no kids. Oh, the mitosis family, where, where the eggs divide. Mm -hmm. I am the only, I have an older brother, an older sister, and a little brother. I'm the only one with kids. You have an older sister and an older brother, but you're the only one with kids. Mm hmm And you said you're going to be teaching in the fall? Yes. Where? At Del Valley High School. You're going to be teaching math again? I am so far. Um, algebra 1, that's the only course I know so far, but I'm excited to get back to work. Okay. I took one year off, that was enough, and uh, I'm just ready to get back in and teach those kids math, get them excited about it, because uh, math, I just love it, and if you teach these kids the right way and they can see your passion for it mm -hmm. and how excited you are, they'll start to, well, not all of them, but a lot of them will start to, you know, want to do well and get excited about it, too. Did you get your teaching certificate before you left college or as yes. you left college? Yes. Well, yeah, it's, it's official once you graduate. But I had taken all my tests and everything before I graduated. You took the required, uh, what, T Texas Education Agency test or whatever? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think of what it is. There's two tests you have to take. <clears throat> I can't even remember what they're called. One is a content, math mm -hmm. content test um, for to be able to teach grades 8 through 12. Hardest test I've ever taken. Some people have had to take it five times, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's one that's just a just basic teaching question test, so strategies uh, for teaching. A few years back, I took a... Uh summer course in education I took the competency test to teach middle school English language arts and reading mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun mm -hmm. the test is strange as heck yeah I bet <laughs> but uh, it was a good thing well how do you see uh, you think you ever run for office one day or anything like that oh I don't are I just, don't just content to be a worker a political worker be so to speak yeah I mean anything is open in the future, but right now, that isn't what I'm looking at. Because I think, uh, I know that uh, Gabriel Needler works at the school where you're gonna be working mm -hmm. at, he, and he was a candidate for state rep. I do know that. He's actually, he's at the alternative school mm -hmm. in the district, so he uh, he deals with, you know, he deals with a lot um, different types of kids than he's, I will he, be. He's usually on the show with me, uh, He's on usually on the show me from time to time for sure. Mm hmm He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a he's a guy. He's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely a guy. <laughs> but uh, in terms of outreach, did you uh, I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not. I can oh gosh. I can ask you now we're on air. Oh goodness. I heard you want to get your own show. Oh, okay. I did talk about that with Gary a bit, just in a passing. We did talk about it. I, I had dibs today that Gary might show up down here today with you <laughs> 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 to support you. As a, as a, not that you need it. Right. But uh, it's good to uh, to get younger blood into the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I heard that you were interested in being precinct chair. I don't know where I heard that from. I don't know. Um, 
but that the, but the precinct already had a chair. Yes, if if there was one open, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely would have jumped into that spot right away. Now there are going to be opportunities coming up to work in campaigns starting next year. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Governor Abbott is already trying to recruit some people to, to assist in his campaign effort already. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's going to be a topic for discussion at the meeting on Saturday. We know we, you know, we do have a Austin area MLK meeting this Saturday at 1030 at the Carver Library in room number two. Okay. I don't know how many people are going to show. I hope it, I know I'll show them. I wish I, unfortunately, but you're I just. you going to be out of town, right? I'll be in town, but I have a huge march uh, that's well, happening. You got that march. What time is that march? It starts at 9. At 9? Yes. Ooh. But it is what it is. Yeah. The march, march goes from 9 to what? 1 It'll or 2 or something like that? It'll go 9 till about noon. Oh, um, okay. But who knows? There's ton of protesters that are coming out. We have some pretty well, big... Well, you're going to have some competing protesters, I bet. Oh, yeah. That, that's be, what I mean be, by... And they'll be out there being stupid. Definitely. Um, we have some pretty big names coming and speaking that... Who's coming? There's Kyle Chapman, who is Bay Stickman. Um, he and he was got known from Berkeley. He got arrested there at the March for Trump event mm -hmm. there. There's Joe Biggs, who's been on, you know, from InfoWars. Mm -hmm. There's Joseph Offutt, who he's an amazing guy from Dallas. And he started, um, he has this Hug a Cop program going on. And he's an African-American mm -hmm. conservative. And he'll be speaking. He has an organization he just started. And let's see, who else do we have? There's another guy named Outlaw Morgan, who's huge. So it's going to go, this march is going to go from where to where? It starts at... Does it end at the Capitol? It starts at Woldridge Square Park, which is at 900 Guadalupe, a couple of blocks away from the Capitol. And then we'll march around up Congress, mm -hmm. stop at the Capitol, and we're going to have some of the speakers speak mm -hmm. there. And then, once they're done, go back around, and we'll end at Wold Woldridge Square Park. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a circular mm -hmm. thing with a stop at the Capitol for the speakers. Yes. That ought to be interesting. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a good one, but you're definite. <laughs> you'll see it on the news, definitely. Um, maybe, maybe. You know the news of the, you know the news is. Not exactly uh, unbiased, right? From what I can see, uh, for example, today uh, the Supreme Court put in place some of the aspects of the Trump so-called travel ban, mm -hmm. and it's almost like they don't even want to talk about it on CNN because I checked oh, CNN. Oh, of course. I checked CNN and the I, I checked the Communist News Network, and MSNBC, mm -hmm. to see what they're saying. You know, when they had the Trump rally on last week, I think it was a Cedar Rapids, Iowa or something, mm -hmm. they didn't cover the rally. They wanted to talk about impeachment and health care and all, anything but. Oh, of course. You know, they're also having, on July 2nd here in Austin, a huge impeachment march for Trump. There's, there'll be probably thousands of people there, just a march that they want him impeached. That's a nice way to burn off some energy. Yeah. <laughs> get, some, get some little exercise. Right. That's about get your it. daily exercise. Because it's not happening. I know. I like this. I like the Russian thing, really, because uh, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians. Oh. <laughs> and I ask, on, I ask on Facebook a lot. You write on Facebook a lot, too. Mm -hmm. You write a lot of stuff on Facebook. I do. Um, I said, some, somebody tell me. It ha didn't affect one vote, but they, but they, but they, they, they changed the election. Right. How, how you change an election without changing one vote? Right. I know. The whole Russian and they, thing. And they talk about WikiLeaks. 
But what did WikiLeaks say? Is it true? They don't talk about that. Right. Anything but. They don't want to talk about the truth. There is no truth. You can have your own truth. Yeah, I mean. I'm LeBron James. <laughs> you know, it's hard to debate with liberals because they take what they want to be true and they make it a fact. And even if you point out, no, 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 <laughs> what you're saying is wrong because of this, this, and this. They still, they don't care. No, no. what I'm saying is true and you're wrong. And They're devils. So how are you supposed to? They're, de they're devils. Mm -hmm. They really are. I mean, they're, they're pretty bad. I'm a man, but I can walk out there and turn myself into a woman by mere, because I say so. Mm -hmm. They will try to convince you that a lie is the truth and the truth is a lie. Right. It sounds like Satan to me. It does. It's not truth. Right. I mean, and it's only going to get worse. I don't see it getting better. <clears throat> I'm not sure about that. I think, um, I think people may slowly begin to come to their senses. That would be good. It, it'll be slow. It'll be grudging. But I think uh, when they went with this, 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 I think the bath, the bathroom bullshit went too far. Mm -hmm. It just went too far. And I believe that, unfortunately, it may take something terrible to happen for people to wake the hell up. I hope it doesn't, but it may. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're shooting down congressmen. Right. And they don't. There's not too much talk about that on uh, CNN, MSNBC, oh, I ABC, know. CBS. I mean that situation. The guy before now. Now, now if now if a, if if a transvestite got got shot, they want to stop. They want to stop the world from turning around. This oh world. yeah, there'd be riots all over the place for that. And um, man, it's just disappointing. To think about. It's sick. It is. It's called it what it is. It is. And it's, that's not the only sick thing going on. To me, there, there are a lot of things that, that liberals seem to support and endorse that are just insane. Mm -hmm. Partial birth abortion, oh, partial goodness. birth abortion is insane. That, and um, I wish they'd televise it on TV. That is probably that is barbaric. In general, pro life issues are probably the single thing that I'm more passionate about than any other issue. Mm -hmm. That's something that's really important to me. Um, so, and you know, the people that really get me going is people that say, oh, I'm not for abortion, or yeah, I'm not for abortion, but I'm pro-choice. And I say, if you're pro and there's a lot of those, to make them feel better, <laughs> to make them feel better inside. That's what it's all about, feeling good. They yeah. Think that you have a constitutional <laughs> right to feel good. Right. And not be offended. Right. And you know, um, Ben Shapiro, he has this saying. He says, facts don't care about your feelings. And mm -hmm. it's true. I mean, you can't, things that make you feel good don't make good policy. That's just the way that it is. I, um, I just think that it's interesting, you say, what did you say, 29? Yes. I used to be 29. Really? It was a while back. I was 29. Is that 31 years ago? <laughs> it's been a minute. I'm not 31. 29. 34 years ago. I'm doing okay. But uh, what, I was, what I was wanting to ask you about was uh, the, there are going to be opportunities to work in campaigns that are going to come up. Mm -hmm. Phone banking, block walking, of which I've done. 
Dickens about that kind of stuff too. But there are things that we as conservatives have to do. Right. And hopefully through Austin Area NLK, we can begin to do some of those things. Although we're not, we're nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. We're a, we're a, we're, we're va value focused. Right. And to me, if you're value focused, you're going to be quote God focused. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have some people value focused. They want, they want Sharia law. Right. Like anything but Christianity. Right, right. I mean, it was a night. It was good. Uh, Supreme Court ruling on uh, religion today too. They don't want to talk about that one either. Which? What was that? Where uh, the religious-based private school could get public funding to fix up the playground for kids. That's good. If it were a Muslim school, it'd be they, no problem. Mm -hmm. But because the Christian school is a problem. Mm. It's okay to persecute Christians, but not any other religion. Right. They're for freedom of religion, but not Christians. That's exactly it. That's what I. That's what I mean. It's so backwards, so backwards. For a country that was based and established on Judeo-Christian principles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When I worked at Judicial Watch in Washington D.C. in uh, the latter part of the '90s, we had concluded that basically liberals were anarchists. You don't want government. That's why I can shoot congressmen. Mm -hmm. That's why I can disrupt campuses all over the place, stop people from speaking. Right. They're really, they're really uh, not quite communist. They're really totalitarianists, really. Mm -hmm. They don't want anybody thinking any differently. Everybody think this way. Right. Everybody's equal. Now, I posed a question on Facebook for about a week or two now because I was asking, what is equality? No one's given me a definition yet. I don't think they know what it is. I don't think it exists. No. I agree if on that. If equality means equal outcomes, oh. you can't ensure equal outcomes. No, that's impossible. <laughs> if equality means equality of opportunity, you may be able to make that a reality. But to me, mm, equality would... doesn't exist. If equality existed, I could go down and dunk like LeBron. <laughs> I can't. Right. I'm not going to be 6'8", 250, 260 and go down and dunk. That's not happening. Right. I can cry all I want. I can believe all I want. Mm -hmm. but I can announce all I want, but I won't be able to go down and dunk like LeBron. <laughs> I completely agree with that. that I mean... I have, like, a good, I have a good buddy who's almost a brother, Richard Dinkins. He's a appellate court judge in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I put it on Facebook a few weeks ago. I said, what is it going? I've been fighting for equality for 40 years. What can I do? You know, I, I said, well, what is it? He hasn't told me yet. I don't think he can tell me. <laughs> of course, we had a running argument for four years in college about the obligations of artists and writers and things like that. But uh, he, he can't win that one either. He can't win. He can't win anything. Mm -hmm. he, he says he's been fighting for equality for 40 years. Well, what is it exactly you've been fighting for? Tell me can't tell me. Right. You know, and I, I, I even went further on Facebook. I said, are you fighting for equal reality? If you, want, if you want the equal reality to a white man, you have to be white. You have a problem with being black? I don't. I'm okay being me. Mm -hmm. Despite the challenges of what it, that may come with it, it's nice being alive. I'm, I'm happy to be alive. Right. I'm not mad at God for making me however he made me. And that's it's how it should business. be. But if, 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 if is, is there even such a thing as equality? I think not. Right. No, I mean. It's something It's nice to talk about, but it's not real. I agree with that. It's just Definitely. like that man that thinks he's a woman. It's nice to think that if you want to, but that's not real. Right. And don't try to convince me that it's real. Right. I'm not buying your bullshit. I call a spade a spade. And my baby brother, who's liberal to the bone, he says, uh, you're not supposed to ask, what are you? Like I said, you're a woman. You're supposed to say, ask, who are you? I, I almost cuss, but, you know, who the hell are you tell me how to talk? All right. You're crazy. All right. I'm free to ask you however I want to ask you. You might not like it. So what? You want to fight? Let's fight. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. Well, well, he's of that feel good, everybody feel good about themselves, they'll, they'll be uh, successful. 
a few years ago, they're saying that if people feel successful, they'll be successful. If they feel good, they'll be successful. Really? I mean, I wonder if I can feel good all the way to being <laughs> six, eight, two, thirty. Right. No matter how I feel about myself, I'm not going to be LeBron James. Right. Well, um, maybe I got it wrong. This is something that I wanted to bring up. Um, a couple of, well, f a couple of months ago, I had a family member that's pretty, you know, I'm half black. Mm -hmm. And so I'd have. No, I didn't know that. I had, okay. I had, Tell me about it. I had a black fam family member that's very close to me tell me that because I am a conservative that th this is the exact quote you're trade to your race I don't know how to be black and she's glad that she knows how to be black but I don't know how to I s and I also got called a racist by the same person for uh, supporting Trump and being happy that he won the election. And that's the mindset of so many. Most black people are brainwashed anyway, I'm going right. to say it. I, I, definitely. Say it. They're brainwashed. Right. They're just like slaves on a plantation. Mm -hmm. They're killing your babies, got your behind brainwashed, and you're sitting there and you're okay with it. Right. It's just like you have to understand that uh, if you put a frog in some water and boil and turn the heat up slowly, he'll cook to death. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening to black people. Mm -hmm. their, their genocidal rates of abortion, you got a congressional black caucus that's controlled by liberal whites, you have, and, and black minds are controlled by liberal whites people, yes. for the most part. Yes, they are. For the most part. They are. But that's a, that's a choice they make. They, they've been educated to be slaves. Right. And that's what they are perfectly. And they will fight to, they will fight against you to, to maintain that because that's their reality. Mm -hmm. They've been told what to think. Mm -hmm. They've been told to fight for equality without knowing what the hell it is. Right. Now, my buddy's an appeals court judge and is as bright as a person as I know. But he says he's been fighting equality for equality for 40 years. He don't even know what the hell he's fighting for and won't tell me. And I dare him to watch this show and you can write and call me anytime, brother. You know that. <laughs> But they don't know. They don't think. And as a man, the Bible teaches that as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you're garbage, you'll be garbage. Mm -hmm. If you think as a slave, you'll be a slave. Well, you don't have to admit it. You're just thinking that way. You're just being one. Right. They go in and vote Democratic. They don't, they don't know anything about the process. They know the register to vote, vote and go home. They know nothing about the precinct convention process. Never been to a state convention. Don't know how to get to a national convention. Right. But I'm a Democrat. I voted. What they do, they don't realize the process by which they come to support policies that are really anti-black. Yes. They don't know. They don't know the process. Right. And, um, you know. But people like us and, and Austin and MLK, we have to get involve ourselves in educating people on the process. Because yes. There's a there's a part of the, the game that the majority of the black community doesn't know about and isn't invited to. That's how they end up supporting these policies that are really anti-black. Right. In my view, there are many, there are no, there's no one who's more anti-black than a black Democrat. They are not Frederick Douglass Democrat. They are not freedom and opportunity people. Mm -hmm. They give, feed me. Yes. Like, like wait, waiting to be fed. Exactly. Give me something. Exactly. Um, it's bad having to, you know, to want to get as much as you can from the government and not being in control of your own they, they success. Think, they think success is a government check. Right. We were in a parade uh, a couple of years ago, and it was the first time the Travis County Republican Party had a float in the Juneteenth parade. And we were going by, and they said, the Republican Party, write me a check. Not give me a job. Write me a check. That's what she said. It goes with her exact words. And we're supposed to be out working, God working opportunity, God family. Mm -hmm. But when a people can be made to disregard their God, anything is possible. Right. 
They can tell you it's, a, it's about a woman's right to choose, not a baby's life. They can tell you it's about this man wants to be a woman. He, he This man wants to be a woman. They can tell you anything. Mm -hmm. They can sell you anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened to our people. Oh, yeah. But they say that education is the key. And so my thing is that I've kind of evolved in, in my thinking. I think the key is educational excellence. But to me, we have a burden as conservatives to try to enlighten and educate our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I say this every show, and I got to say it now. I believe that what's good for the black community is good for the community. Of course. Definitely. Now, we got, we got this March Saturday, right? We have an Austin Air MLK meeting Saturday at 1030, which is not a good time, but I, <laughs> I think I'm going to send that notice out anyway. Yeah. But uh, because we have a lot of work to do. Yes. There is a lot going, to be was, done. There's a lot to do, a whole mm -hmm. lot to do here in Travis. I, I believe that I believe that Travis can is can be and probably is the center of the political universe because to me, what happens here di can dictate what happens in Texas, and what happens in Texas can dictate what happens in the United States. What happens in the United States can dictate at least what happens in the world. I think it starts with us. I completely we're, agree we're with ground, that. We're ground, ground zero is right here. And we're lucky to be here. I mean, <laughs> I know you laugh and a lot, but to me, there's just, because there's so much to do here and there's so much that you can do to try and change politics here. Well, I think that, you know, change has to, I think the change that needs to happen is going to happen right here in Travis. And I'm happy to be a part of it, hopefully a, a, positive, a positive part of it. Because right. I'm not scared. I didn't come here to make friends, and I'm not, get, I'm not getting out of life alive. Mm -hmm. I'm really not. Wonderful though I may be, <laughs> I'm not getting out of this <laughs> alive. But uh, the, the objective is for me to do all the good that I can do while I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then they're going to bury me, and you know, some people will cry a couple of days, and then they're going to get back to living. But I want to thank you for being on my show. Oh, thank you for having me. You got to come this again. This was good. Of course.